Hello, my name is Guy Rounce and I'd like to welcome you to the first in an ongoing series of tutorial videos which we are producing for the readers of the Deep Exploration blog. The subject of these videos is going to be how to effectively use Right Hemisphere's visual communication software Deep Exploration and how you can extend the value of your CAD data using this system. We will be showing some of the very basics of the system and week by week moving on to different topics and more and more advanced areas of the software to try and give you a broad range of knowledge of what the system is capable of and hopefully providing some good tips and tricks along the way. These videos are produced by Right Connect, Right Hemisphere's distribution partner for Asia Pacific. As this is the first in the series of specially produced videos, we thought we would go right back to the basics of the software and provide a comprehensive guide regarding the user interface of Deep Exploration. So this video is going to include the general layout of the screen, basic tools and panels and some of their functionality, model orientation and display options, and the right mouse button menus. So first let's take a look at the general layout of the screen when you first open Deep Exploration. In the centre of the screen, with the default fading grey background, you have the viewport where all your data and models will be displayed. Each side of the viewport are various panels. These can be undocked from their various locations and repositioned around the screen or just left hanging in space. You can see that in the corner of each panel there is a small X and an arrowhead pointing down. The X will remove the panel from the screen and the arrow will show the complete list of panels available to you. If you want to add a panel to the screen, simply click on the name and it will appear. So in the coming weeks we will aim to show you many of the different functionalities of these categories of panels. At the top of the screen there is the toolbar area. I have reduced the amount of toolbars you can see here to just the ones whose functionality I will cover in this video. But if you right click in the toolbar area, you can see that a list of all the toolbars that are available to you comes up. And just like with the panels, you click a toolbar and it will appear in the toolbar area. Again, as per the panels, we are aiming to give you a good overview of the functionality of each of these toolbars in the up and coming weekly videos on this blog. At the bottom of the screen, you will see a double arrowhead next to the word Restore. If you click on the arrow, then this large sash window opens up, and in the sash area there are several more panels. And this is the default location for panels such as materials, textures, and one very important panel called My 3D Models. And this is a default folder which is located in your My Documents folder in Windows. And this is where I keep all of my models. And I'm going to open up a model so we can go and explore some of the basic functionality of the Deep Exploration software. You can see, as soon as I open up the model, then the scene tree here on the left hand side populates with the components of this assembly. Now unlike a CAD system, there is no parent-child relationship between these components and sub-assemblies, so you are free to move them around and drag them up and down the scene tree. The folder icons here represent sub-assemblies. You can see, if I select a component in the scene tree, then it highlights red in the viewport and vice versa. The right mouse button in Deep Exploration is context sensitive, which means that depending on what you click on will depend on the options you get in the menu. For example, if I right mouse button click on this selected component, I can see that in this menu I could zoom into the selected component so it fills the viewport, or invert my selection so that everything other than this component is selected, or I could also attach this component to a group, or what is more commonly referred to as a sub-assembly, or I could copy or duplicate this component. If we compare this to the menu I get when I just right mouse button and click to the side of the model, you can see here that the menu is different and I get the options to view all objects, show the standard view of my model, or hide and select all objects. For example, I could select two or three components by clicking on them and holding down the control key, right mouse button and click and invert my selection, and then hide all those objects by using either the menu or the keyboard shortcut of pressing the H key. Then do some work on these items and then use the other right mouse button menu to show all my objects and then return to my standard view. Now let's have a look at some toolbar functionality. I've got two toolbars active in the toolbar area at the moment. As we can see from this list they are navigation and 3D editor. First is the navigation toolbar. By default, the selection of this toolbar should be Orbit, whereby you can rotate and move the model around freely in the viewport. 
There is also a walkthrough mode whereby you can set an eye level height and walk through a model at various speeds. Again, we're going to dedicate an entire video to creating that type of visual, so keep an eye out for that one in the future. Turntable mode is the next option, and this is where the model will only spin on its z-axis, a bit like a turntable. So you can see here how I can't fully rotate the model over on itself. Next we have manual controls for zoom and pan, which you can do equally as easily with the middle mouse button. Then you have a best fit option, which will fill the screen with your model, and then we can move it back to standard view with this final icon. The next toolbar is 3D Editor. Here we have the Home button which will return your model to its home position and you can also change that to a custom position if you use the flyout menu. Selection mode is next. You can drag a box around a set of components as a quick way of selecting them and with this tool you need to hold down the control key when you drag the box or circle. Next is General Selection Mode. This just allows you to deselect any other tool that's in use and go ahead and select any component in the viewport. Pull Apart Tool allows you to move components away from the main structure of the assembly. You can see here I can just move them freely around the screen and then I can use my Home button to return them to their original position. Next in this toolbar are the Move, Rotate and Scale tools. and These are very simple to use. Just select the component and either move, rotate or scale in the direction you choose on the tri-coloured pivot point that appears or for the case of rotate, use the sphere. These next tools such as move pivot point, rotate pivot point and edit keyframes and the section cutting tools will all be covered in detail in forthcoming videos such as the drawing tools video, animation sequences and technical illustrations video. So look out for those coming soon. Finally, I'd like to go through the two named icons here, called Display and View. View deals with the exact orientation of the model. So you can orientate your model to its exact top, bottom or side views, and you can see the relevant keyboard shortcuts at the side here. Toggling Perspective View on and off is also in this menu, as are preset isometric views, and the ability to create custom views based on angles and coordinates that might be specific to your company or to a particular project. So for example, I'll go to an ISO view here, and then hit T for the top view, zoom out, and select P to get myself back into perspective mode. Finally, we have the display menu. The main options here are to change the display of the model from solid to transparent or wireframe or technical illustration. But additionally you have control over the grid display and shadow, what lighting effects you might want for this model, and in materials you can select if you do or do not want to show 3D textures or transparency on your models, both of which can slow down performance if there are a lot of them. However, in my opinion, the most helpful aspect of this menu is at the very top, and it's the option called Viewports. This is an area where you can control the style and amount of windows you have in your viewport. So I'll select four views from this extensive list, and you can see how now I have four views in which to move the model around and show its various different details. I can hit P to put the model in this view into perspective, and also control G on this window to toggle through the different grid options and then control F to turn the shadow on and off. And in this window I'd like a transparent model and in this one a technical illustration representation. So you can see how that would be a very helpful option when it comes to working on your models and CAD data. So that wraps up this particular tutorial. We hope this has been of some help to you. Please check back each week for a new video and keep checking the Deep Exploration blog for other posts that we are putting up all the time. If you would like to see some examples of work from Deep Exploration, such as renderings and animations, then you can check out my profile, which can be found in the list of contributors on the Deep Exploration blog. My name is Guy Rounds. Thanks for watching this video, and please let us know if there are any Deep Exploration subjects which you would like to see covered in the future.